You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. Jared Mounts. So we got a fun one here, the, the season wrap-up for your tournament trail. Right? Yeah, for Shando Valley Bass. Um, you know, you threw it out to him at the beginning of the year. If anybody one or top three want to come on and just kind of share their experience you know they had an open invitation so uh, we had several throughout the year that that decided to jump on and and talk and uh, i was telling them before i always get a kick out of when you get partners and and they're telling their story about you know that that fishing tournament that event that day and decisions are going to be talking today about decisions that you got to make and that's what it's so funny in the comment section people like the most is when you have it's like almost like the other couple that you have in your mm. life it's not your wife but it's <laughs> almost like it's your partner and you guys just shoot the shit and talk about the tournament right. because all the time it's like like an iconelli like well i wanted on berkeley and this is what i did and i'd like to thank everybody right and it's not just you know two friends saying like you asshole you lost us the tournament that's it's right. like, but that's that's what it's like for like 90 percent of the people out there is it's these local events where you have a partner and what happened in that boat that made everything happen? That's right. It's one thing when you're alone and you're in your head, but it's another thing when you, it, for me, it was my brother growing up, but then to you, it might be your best friend or right. something like that. And I think that's always, that dynamic is fascinating. Yeah. We had uh, 23, his last weekend in October, 23 boats in the first day and right around 20, I think, 19, 20, second day. And so we have with us here, let them introduce themselves with Jason Ford and Justin Rush, uh, first year together as partners. And uh, you guys want to tell the viewers a little bit about, about yourself? Yeah, Jason Ford, glad to have us. Uh, I started fishing when I was really young. I got pictures at home, me in a diaper. My dad would take me out there. I was fortunate enough to have uh, grandparents and aunt and uncle that had farm ponds. And that's how I grew up fishing. It just kind of progressed. Uh, I got a teenager, got me a little 10 foot John boat. I would take that John boat back to the ponds and, and fish. And I remember one morning, I was probably 13. And my dad used to love throwing a like a 12 inch rubber worm yeah. wow purple purple grape yep. he would double rig that thing and he was he was a finesse fisherman i i can be but i'm really not I'm mm -hmm. a fire fisherman he caught like a nine nine five that bass when i laid my eyes on that bass it was i was in awe and i just i've been possessed or obsessed ever since yeah. and it's just part of my dna it's i'm a fisherman and i enjoy it so much i like teaching people uh that's a little bit about me i started tournament fishing with lonnie connor back in yep. 2007 so what's that 15 years mm. yeah, lonnie started, with the, yeah. Yeah. started with extreme mm -hmm. uh, we fished for three or four years together in, in tournaments and i've learned a lot from lonnie he's, he's a good he's, angler he's a good, good angler good fishman we're actually going to start a fishing guy business that's awesome oh, that's cool uh, i'm gonna retire march 1st after 30 years almost in law enforcement good for you congratulations thank, thank, you. thank you for your service in that appreciate it he's retired as well yeah and we're gonna give it a go and, and try to teach somebody okay what's your, what's your name what's your, what's your guy's well, service name we've got be? it narrowed down to three or four different things we just haven't decided what it's going to be yet uh, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a try and guys just, and we're gonna link that and just to probably, i'm gonna make a note here we're gonna link his guide service in the episode description when it comes out and we'll make sure we really push that to make sure you guys have that available yeah to that's you. really cool jace that's one thing lonnie when he came on he talked about you know the older you guys you get older you kind of you want to share you know that passion of fishing if you can help somebody else catch fish then you know that's cool too and mm -hmm, just like yeah. you were saying we've all had those influences in our lives growing up you know, in that time to, to see that big fish. And usually it is, it's a bigger fish that really kind of hooks you into it and keeps you going back. So to be able to, you know, share that and teach others um, the art of fishing, that's that's pretty cool stuff. Now, you grew up in Warren County? I grew up in so, Warren County out in Panhandle. So I had a little lot that I was had access to uh, since I was probably 13. And I went through, you know, my teens, young adults before I went in the Army. I spent a lot of time on that river in a canoe and a john boat and a smallmouth fishing there was phenomenal back in late 90s early 2000s it wouldn't be anything to go out with a with a terminator spinnerbait mm -hmm. that chartreuse and white and catch three to four citation smallmouth a day right uh, now i don't know if you can do that i think you can still catch some citations but right. it was just phenomenal fishing uh back back then and it's just it's part of who i am now it's, it's made me who i am that's awesome you gotta have the mad times now 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta put some rocks and get yeah. some mad time. That's the only way yeah. you can catch them. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you, Justin. Oh, so I was born and raised in Chino <clears throat> County. Um, I've been fishing. I can't remember. My dad, he uh, the first time we ever went out, which is weird. Um, he caught a five and a half pounder, and that was it. That was it for me. It was a farm pond in Middletown. Um, we fished there. For, I, we still have permission there. It's been twenty five years we've been fishing there. That's so. cool. Um, yeah, dad got me into it and then really started getting tournament fishing. Uh, it was Jeffrey Brown. He got a boat, he had nitro, brand new nitro. Went to Smith Mountain, did a tournament, zero, not one fish. And I was like, man, this is really how it's going to be. This is really tournament fishing. <laughs> so from there, we did, we did a couple more. And then, uh, in 2009, I was in hunting accident and got shot and blew oh, my no. right finger off. Mm. Wasn't me, but somebody else did it. Mm-hmm. So I took a break, and then uh, he called me one time. It was, God, I can't remember when. But he called so, me and pranked me. Well, he did. He called me and said, this is the sheriff's office. I need you to come in. Um, I can't tell you what happened, but you need to come in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God. And then he, he said, hey, let's, let's fish a Sunday morning tournament down Lake Anna. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I was, had me. It, it was it was it and then me and me and jesse uh gardner mm-hmm. took his dad's boat without telling me we was fishing tournaments. jesse was telling us that story because <laughs> he was on before yep um so that really started that was uh i think that's been three or four years ago yeah. for sbba and that yeah. was that's been it been hooked since and then Bye you guys ahead. ended up together now this year this yeah. year i've this known year. justin for <clears throat> 30, 31 32 I'm 32 yep since he was probably three is that right yeah. him and my dad good friends that's yeah. cool so yeah. then what was this first year like with you guys and we're going to finally get to the last term of the year but like from tournament one to 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 the big chick tournament like has has your has your relationship gotten stronger or is there a divorce going on next year like how, how did it progress we're going to renew cool. our vows oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're going to renew yeah. our vows that's <laughs> good yeah. All right. yeah. marriage is stronger than ever <laughs> yeah. that's good he actually dated my my daughter way back when i think you were 13 or 14 oh, yeah. Yeah. So we got a history together. Huh. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. Well, you're still <laughs> living, so that's a good thing. He's dating his, right. dating his daughter, <laughs> and you're still sitting here breathing. So he must you're like still, you. Still he likes yeah. you. Yeah. So what would you? What are your considered like your strengths and weaknesses then as a group? Because I think it's fascinating. Like you can sometimes have guys that are completely different, have different talents on the boat together, so they kind of mesh. Or you do you guys have the same skill sets when it comes to fishing? Oh man. Well, this is where we we've. I think we'll finish up probably sixth, seventh at the end of the year. Uh, there's probably some tournaments we could have won or been in the money, not won, but been mm-hmm. closer to the money. Uh, we're, we're power fishermen and we're opportunistic. So mm-hmm. if we can find the fish, I feel like we're still together. We can, we can catch the fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a couple situations this year where we was on the fish and we lost two or three fish. Yeah. Like within the boat, you know, right there at the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that's going to happen. That's, that's fishing. It happens to everybody. Yeah. So I think hurt, what hurts us a little bit is one of us not slowing down slowing enough. Down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it hurts us a little bit. That is hard because I've always struggled with that knowing. And I think we talked about this a long ago podcast where you finally put a video camera on your mm-hmm. boat and you realize, and mm-hmm. I realized this too, when I watched film, I was like, oh, I thought I was fishing slow. And I was like, I really wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard to actually stop and slow mm-hmm. down. Yes, it is. Especially yeah. when it fits. One thing, if that power fishing is on and they're eating, but oh, yeah. when that when that changes up, it is, you have to change with it sometimes. And that means slowing down and, and yeah. you're you're sometimes missing spots too. I think when you're, I mean, again, it works. It, it's going to work when you're going around and, and catching the ones that are eaten. But uh, if you're fishing too fast, to your point, you're also not really fishing the whole area, that whole dock or that whole area that yeah, you're. When you think you're fishing slow, <clears throat> you you're just not. need to go right. slower. Yeah. Uh, my that's my 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 finesse fishing is a cinco. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what I go. That's my go-to. Um, I was able to catch some fish off that this year, but. I need to use it more. I need to pick mm-hmm. up that spin rod. Yeah, some that's more. right. No, you're exactly right. Especially when you have tight tournaments like this on the James. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we had the, we had um, we had an individual on the show, guys, and you can look back in the archive from the, fishing the TBF on the James, and that was a tight tournament. Um, I talked to Jeffrey Mort, who actually fished this tournament that we have up on our screen that you guys are show us, which is the BFL Super Tournament on the James. That was a tough tournament. 
we're looking at the weights right now. You guys would have cashed. Everyone here would have cashed a check mm -hmm, at that yeah, one. Yeah. Um, going into this James tournament, and this is a cool dichotomy because we got you know you fish this tournament, you guys mm -hmm. fish this tournament as well. I'll set the stage for both of you guys, uh, both groups. What were you expecting going into this? Like, did you uh, did you guys get practice? I know you guys had like what one day of practice? One day. Okay. We thought it'd be hammers. <laughs> yeah, you know, you always. It's funny you say that because you always the Chickahominy just obviously has is a great fishery, mm -hmm. has a lot to offer, and there's there's big fish to be caught and it's like you always go in with that thought but you know i don't know about you guys but there's times too it's like gosh whatever it is whether it's a high pressure or whatever 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 you're going in there and it ends up being a grind sometimes and so i've tried to stay even keel myself and think well just you know and it doesn't matter sometimes your practice you may have a great practice and think you got to put together and come in the next day and it's totally mm -hmm. different or one day to next and credit to these guys they stay pretty consistent both days but the James fish tough this year because I I was with you guys the first time you went to the mm -hmm. James and there was like what six chick. six hundred boats going mm -hmm. out of the chick and I was yeah. what five pounds got you a check it was something yeah. crazy it like was, that it was also down and that yeah. was tough oh, yeah. we caught we probably caught seventy fish that weekend mm -hmm. really they were all the same exact size mm -hmm. pound pound and a half yeah we're not getting we caught caught one the first day it was like right three, three pounds yeah and mm -hmm. that was it you can't you. We just couldn't get a bigger bite. So were you all able to figure something out in practice that did pay off day one? In practice, uh, we went downriver, mm -hmm. and uh, we started fishing wood, uh, throwing like a square barrel. Mm -hmm. we, we have good luck square barrels, 1.5s mm -hmm. around those cypress trees. If the tide's out, then we'll fish out. If the tide's – I'm sorry. If the tide's out, we'll fish in behind those cypress. Mm -hmm. It pulls back out. The fish pull back out. We couldn't catch a fish off wood mm -hmm. at all Friday. Mm -hmm. And that was – Three, three, three hours. Three hours? Yeah. Hmm. And typically in the past, I've had good luck on mm -hmm, Cypress trees mm -hmm. of Chick. I mean, yeah. I, I have. And he's, right. he's had really good luck yeah. on Cypress trees. So we tried that. It didn't work for us. They just they weren't there. They weren't biting what we were throwing anyways. Uh, we found a flat down river with some good grass, and about four and a half to five foot of water. Uh, the grass was probably about a foot from the top. Uh, the tide at that point was it was it was high tide or tide was, coming in. Go, well, yeah, coming in. Yep, yep, coming in, and uh, we were throwing a chatterbait, uh, something similar to this this black and blue with a reaction innovation trailer. If hmm. you can see that, mm -hmm. uh, you'd make long casts, and if you thought you were getting hung up, ripping it through that grass, that was a good thing. The ripping more you it. felt that pressure from that grass, the better, and mm -hmm. you just would take your rod tip and just rip it rip mm -hmm. it out of catching three or four like that in a matter of five yeah. minutes was that grass still alive because there was a lot of dead grass too three different pockets i mean it depends on where you're at this this you grass, was, it was, it was still it was, yeah it was still lush. green it was, yeah okay it was green i mean down in the bottom was kind of brown the tips yeah. were brown right but once you pull the grass off of it interesting that, that really green thick gotcha. grass and so uh needs to say we we ripped grass for three days and i think my shoulders are i'm still, still sore. Feeling, yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. we did uh, it's for, not for, just pulling it through. It's you. I mean, you gotta snap your rod hard as you can do it, and hmm. when it come out, and it would it would flutter down, and they would just load up. It, huh? Yeah, I was think the, that's the that's the first time you fished like that. That's the first time I ever fished grass like that, and it was it, it was fun. <laughs> it was real fun. I, I was, think by I think Sunday, he was actually laying on the back of the boat, flat because the middle of his shoulder blades me. were just it'll work aching. on you. Yeah, yeah. so. But it worked for us. Uh, we caught some fish on on this square bill, uh, in the mouth of a creek, uh, on some wood actually, where it funneled down, and got neck down, uh, real skinny. Uh, but other than that, it was the, the cinco, the scary Yamamoto cinco, uh, slowing down some. That was our baits. Uh, that was a, basically our baits. Hmm. Uh, threw some top water. Not a bite. Yeah, we didn't get anything on top water either. No blow up. Did you see that there were short striking your chatterbait at all? Because I've heard a lot of people on the James this, this winter, this fall, were having an issue with them not always coming buttoned up correctly. Oh, they were. These these, these fish, at least we were inhaling we were, it. They were, they were inhaling it. They were inhaling mm -hmm. Was there throats. was there a tide that you saw that was working better, or was it just day all as day? As long as it was moving. As long as it was yeah, moving. It was, Interesting. When that slack, you would you would still fish it, but it would just be it would be dead. Now, yeah. you, were you guys fishing wood? So we kind of, in practice, um, I got onto a spinnerbait, which I'm a big jackhammer chatterbait guy too. And that's, I got away from the spinnerbait for a long time. Um, CT Custom spinnerbaits, Chris, 
He started selling them. It, it looks a lot like the War Eagle with that head. It really does actually. And mm -hmm. it was it's kind of a uh, copper blade, willow blade. Um, had a three and a half, almost four pounder on that, and kind of rode that like you're saying, rode that the whole. Now it was usually five to ten feet off the bank, and I don't know if it was coming off the bank, if it was following it, but it was hitting it, you know, off the bank, kind of a slow roll type of technique. But it's one of those things too, is you know, a hundred. 150 casts and then you get yeah, it load up so it was a lot in between um yeah. but uh the first day i did have big trd like doing that big trd mm -hmm. and the green pumpkin goby uh, on the back side of a dock um and then uh but it was our bites were sporadic we wouldn't get them like and we never really patterned i don't think we ever really had a, a dedicated pattern for us mm -hmm. um and we didn't fish that the lush green grass what we were seeing yeah. was more of a, a dead variety dead and uh, fish, it yeah. just doesn't didn't produce but so did you guys <clears throat> specifically decide like we're just going to look for a good grass bed or did you like just happen upon it well we we typically like i said we started off with wood in, in the past this time of year we, we've had luck on cypress trees and he's had luck on cypress trees mm -hmm. so that was our focus after two hours two and a half hours <laughs> either they're not there mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they're just they're not going to bite yeah so we decided to make a move and, and go down down river and we the first grass flat we hit was on the right i think it was about five or six miles down yeah. mm -hmm. uh we caught two small fish i mean pounders uh we fished up for about an hour and then we moved on down a little bit further and found some grass that was that was good grass mm -hmm. and you were thinking the fish ought to be there mm -hmm. I mean, they should be here yeah. mm -hmm. i mean the depth's good uh, mm -hmm. There were some channels in you know in this flat where they could dip down with the tides going in and out where they could drop down and stay. Uh, I kept saying they should be here. They should be here. Second, third cast, bam, there was a fish. Wow! So a light yeah. bulb went off. Said, mm. and I was fishing like that. I was throwing that and just I mean just ripping, ripping it. I uh, felt like you're getting hung up. Think you got a lot of grass on your bait, and then all of a sudden, bam, another one. And then I'm like, and they were aggressive. I, and I told Justin, I said they're here, man. <coughs> they're here. We, we just this is what they want. We're going to have to fish like this. Mm -hmm. So we caught two or three more. Yeah, we decided were, that's enough. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't know how many are there, but I, I, I knew there was enough to sustain for two days. Mm -hmm. uh, so we left and we caught some smaller fish uh, out in Main River. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So first thing Saturday morning, we went back to this location and uh, we had five in a boat. Oh, we had five in a boat by, oh, it was 15 minutes. Yeah. In 15 minutes, we had five in the boat, and I was like, well, this is going to be a good day. And this and is on then, Saturday? This is on Saturday. Saturday. Right. Then about, what, about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, we got slack tight, and that's yeah. where we messed up. We we should have stayed in this grounded, but we're like, man, we got to get out of here. We got to catch fish. We don't, cause we had we had the, what we had that morning, but we weighed in. Is yeah, that right? That was, uh, yeah. Ten and a half pounds, yeah, something, something like pounds, that. Ten and a half pounds, like, we just gotta go find one big bite and we got it. So you, type of trees, split you, the type of trees. You think it was the anxiety of like, if you would have just stayed there, you think it would have changed the day? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think we needed to grind it. I think maybe if you had some tweaking to do on lures, or if you needed to retie Re some things, or you needed to uh, make adjustments on your fishing line, or maybe eat a sandwich, a yeah. uh, peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I think that would have been a good time to do that. Maybe call your wife or girlfriend, say yeah. I love you. What are yeah. you doing today? Yeah. yeah. That would have been a good time to maybe take an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Maybe fish some, but maybe catch up on a work email. <laughs> that's what we should have done and just camped out. See, and, that's tough, though, too, because if you do that and it doesn't doesn't yeah, pay you know, off, you're going to say, gonna ah, we should have run, you know, because – and that's what is always intriguing to me about decisions is, you know, hindsight, you can look back and say, well, we should have done that. Yeah. But if – if it didn't pay off, then you're going to be, you should say, we well, I should have moved. Yeah. So but. I had that mindset, you know, through college when I fished some semi-pro tournaments. And then this past year, you know, I finally started to fish a kayak tournament because I want to try it. And holy God, it's a different mindset mm. because I had to, like, I mean, my, my butt, like I'm pedaling. And so I was cramping, calf cramping. Like I had to fish. I remember like, Anna, I fished this one stretch four times because I just didn't have the potassium mm. apparently to be able to go much further. And on the fourth time through this thing, I catch three all mm. over all mm. over three pounds light bulb and this light bulb clicked it's like 
am I missing something on my pattern that I don't have to run my 250, you know, Mercury mm, all over right, God's earth. It's right. just you pick an area. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to reformulate when I go from a boat, like you guys think it's like, do I have to run or is it, do you pick an area that has the fish and yeah. then you just figure it out? But like, you're right. I, I don't Jason, know. After hearing that, you're right though, too, because I've been in situations where you just keep recycling a cove and it just it, keeps, it, it I mean, keeps. it's, and it's a timing thing. You're exactly yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And we all say that on a title, but it could be, it's like that anywhere because it's that feeding window, yeah. feeding pattern. Right. They fed up and then they're not going to. So you got to wait for that next, you know, feeding window. And you got to. And you got to be there when it's. Uh, it's almost there. like the temptation that you do have an engine so you can move. And it's like that voice that tells you. That you just but there's also the psyche, too, that I gets me is I need some new scenery. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can, Looking at the same yeah. thing. Same thing. You go an hour and a half. Yeah. You need to or switch an hour it up without a, a bite yeah. after you've been catching them. Yeah. And it starts. It starts you start working on you. Spun out, per se. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tough. And, and the problem with the chick is there's so much fishable water. I mean, yeah. you're talking oh, about cypress trees, right. there's pads, yeah. there's grass, there's docks, there's deep water, there's riprap. I mean, there's yeah. everything you could even want or imagine. So that's working on you too. Like, do we go, go here? Yeah. Do we go there? We've had success there before, you know. And that's not yeah. counting the, the umpteen creeks that are there. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we all like fishing back in creeks. Yes. They're there. I mean, they're everywhere. Right. So, so what did you do day one? What happened? Uh, like I say, we ended up with nine three three, and you know everything came on the spinner bait. Um, I, I did learn, you know, I was trying to think. I don't know if it was day two, the bottom part of the spinner bait. I lost that, <laughs> so it was kind of like, oh gosh, and I didn't have any more of this color, so I switched it up when you were thinking it was a color. So we st tried to stay with that, but I went with the green and chartreuse willow, and and not the same color, and still caught fish on that. Nice. Um, so it, that kind of, you know, how you get stuck on a certain thing, it's gotta yeah. be this. You think it's the vibration of the, I guess it was the... for, for me, I think it was just vibration. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, um, and like I say, tried different things, but, uh, the spinner bait seemed to put all the fish in the boat. Um, except for like, well, the big TRD, I shouldn't say all the fish. Um, but, but it was a grind and we, we moved around, tried different things. Um, you know, and ended up with that nine three three or whatever, which I think was middle of the pack. But is, I but, think you were a little bit above that. Ten, yeah, yeah, yeah. one came in seven or something. Yeah. So, uh, but again, it's intriguing. What I love about tournaments too is you come back and you see. I mean, uh, guy stuck a nine pounder the day, you know, practice day, then came back and didn't catch a fish. You know, oh, and yeah. you got you got some good sticks out there, and yeah. when you see two guys on a boat that you know are good sticks, don't come back after eight or nine hours on the water and, and, a and bite. don't have five or don't get a bite. I mean, that's, what's that tell you? And then, yeah. um, you know, looking at, like you're saying the week before the numbers, I mean, it's, uh, that's what I'm intrigued by. If you go out there by yourself, you don't have anything to compare it to good or bad. You know, you don't get a good day right. or bad day, mm -hmm. but, um, so after day one, so once you, uh, weigh in day one, you know, are you, looking to i guess stay with the same pattern if that's going to work you're going to try to stay that you tie on anything new you're just going to stay with the same Did you make any adjustments we didn't make one adjustment yeah we we talked that night and we both felt that the fish were going to be there uh, be, i yeah. think they're going to even replenish mm -hmm. even after that uh and it's a it's a pretty big flat and the grass is, is good and we rolled up there sunday morning i don't know what time did we kick off? Seven, seven thirty, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Seven o'clock, yeah. Seven forty-five. Yeah, it's forty minutes. And mm -hmm. we had five in a boat relatively quickly. Wow. Do you have many people around you? No. We, 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 every morning we went there. There was the same boat there every morning. Hmm. Really? Right near Duck Blind. I don't know what why from our tournament there. or another just another we, weekend angler. I, I think, think it's they're. A weekend? I don't know what. I think they'll probably come out of the James. Yeah. Find something mm -hmm. else. Because we would go in there, they would come out every single morning for three mornings in a row. And you guys were launching from the chick? We were launching yeah, from the chick. dam. Yeah, at the chick. Okay, the gotcha. Okay. Dam. So, Just logistically yeah, got it. It was about 40 minute drive. Um, oh, wow. 40 yeah. minutes. Okay, yeah. so, so you almost we, like we stayed two hours in total of commute. So you have to 40 minutes there, 40, 40 minutes, minutes back. back. Yeah. Okay. And we stayed, when we when we launched, so every morning we drove at dark to come to, what was it, Parkway? The Parkway? Uh, river Riverside. Uh, Riverside. We would have to drive in the dark to come yeah. there. So... Y'all coming down from Rock Hawk? No, no, we came from well, we went up, I guess up. No, it'd be down, wouldn't it? It went we up at? and then back down. Yeah, we had to so go up to go to pay. To pay, man. Damn, rivers. You're Riverside. at Riverside. Riverside. Oh, Riverside. Yeah, You're at Riverside. Yes, yeah, so we did last it's year. It's a good, it's a good little hike. Yeah. About wow. six miles. 
It's a little sketchy. Well, I'm going to tell you, talking about sketchy, you know, we did that last year, came up, well, then this year we stayed at Rockahawk and came down, which mm -hmm. is just the one bend around. Yeah, it's, well, it's not, yeah, that's not, not bad. Not bad, but I'm going to tell you what, I mean, we're cruising along. I don't know how fast we're going. We're not going fast. And I'm on the left side, and I happen to look. I mean, clear night. Full, I don't know it wasn't full moon, but you could see. There's a daggum floating dock broke loose. And we're like, I yelled at Brian and just, you know, and he kind of goes right a little bit. Man, we were like literally feet from yeah. oh. smoking this, you know, dock out in the middle of the river. So, Thank I goodness. mean, to say sketchy, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and you don't, and you think you stay in the middle of the river channel and you have your places marked and that's one thing, but like mm -hmm. that, I'd have yeah. never suspected seeing a, a floating well, there's dock. there's a couple yeah. of islands there. Though. And there's some yeah. islands and some wrecks, water, yeah, some got, couple wrecks. And, and you don't yeah. got, some of them type of trees ain't yeah. got a float underneath the water. Right. You just never know, yeah. especially yeah. going in the dark like that. There's it was sketchy, no, but there's no point in running. Like that's the thing is, like, I think when you watch the bass guys and stuff, it gives you a false impression. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go balls to the wall at seventy because yeah. it's not like none of us are making a hundred thousand dollars in an exactly. unit. Like go slow. Yeah, like, we God literally was yeah. going twelve miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. we wasn't going far. <laughs> yeah. We leave an hour and a half early just to, you know, right. there's enough time to get there. And yeah. Yep. Just basically a little bit faster than idle. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, like I said, Jesse and them stayed with us, so we followed we followed each other. So we kind of mm -hmm. oh, smart. I okay. the route. Up. And it was a good time. We had a good time. We had caught some fish. Now, now, did you guys both decide for day two? Were you guys both going to fish the same thing, or are you going to fish different things? As far as applications, what we're going to use? Yeah. We didn't change anything. No. Uh, we might have retied, check our knots. And I tried uh, a little lighter weight instead of a half ounce. I tried a three-eighths. Oh, okay. Um, but that wasn't getting in the grass. It would tickle the top. It wouldn't get in it. You had to get so You had to get the in the grass. Deep. You had to be as, in the grass. And I don't know if I mean, they were sitting on the edge of it when you come through and it'll do that little motion and they would... Just... And I got to give you guys credit too because most anglers are going to avoid that. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to get have to pull the grass off your blades and you don't want to have to get into that. And you just, you're going to fish the top of it and that's yeah. all you're going to do. Yeah. But to your point, that's an interesting thing mm -hmm. that you well, could have stayed across the yeah. top and you weren't going to get yeah, bit. Not one We're not going to bite it. We've, we tried it because yeah. it's easier fishing, right? It's right, that's what I'm saying. You. You're, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. cast, let's retrieve it slowly, let's speed it up, slow it down. You had to be... In the grass, I would say six, eight, ten inches. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, yeah, you were yeah, buried in it, all buried. Yeah. And then you just buried. want to pop it. You want to rip it up, cast that run down, rip, 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 and bam, he would hit. Yeah. He would hit. And yeah, it up. would be unbelievable. Yeah. And when you're bringing these fish in there, of course you've got you've got grass. Yeah. You've got grass on your mm -hmm. fish. You didn't know how big the fish was. It felt like a ten pounder, but it's a two pounder. Yeah. So so walk us through bite by bite on Sunday. So you, so you get to your spot on Sunday. What what time do you do you have your first bite? I uh, call it seven. First. 20, 7, yeah. 15. Okay. He caught the first one. It was on a cypress tree. It was Crank actually bait. on a crank. We were just talking about the grass and like. But it wasn't. It was a keeper. It was a pound and a half. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, kind of went down this this point uh, and we come back. There was a couple of cypress trees in like five, six foot of water. Mm -hmm. I said, it's a good spot for him to be staging up to move to this flat. He caught one. Uh, then we, of course, went back down about 7,500 feet, come right back. Nothing. We worked around this point and. We switched over to this little stealth jackhammer and just and started. Oh, we got in some wipers too. Well, oh, actually, actually, I don't know if it was wipers or. I got into those too. It was a wipers, I guess. Or yeah, I, I or didn't know if it was a striper. It wasn't. It was too small. It looked too small to be a striper. I mean, I know they come in. They're not always big. But yeah. yeah. I don't know. We only once we caught were three or four pounds. I mean, they yeah. weren't small. We caught yeah. three or four. Yeah. But then we thought we were on cast. them. I said, oh, my God. We thought we were on them. Yeah. 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 So that's about the third or fourth one. We kind of moved back out. Yeah. Uh, into the flat a little further and uh, we just kind of started plucking away uh, yeah. and, and the fish we caught were you know three four ounce upgrades mm -hmm. and we kind of did that throughout the day and we we decided yeah. to stay uh since we left saturday right okay uh we, we, we left saturday to, went to a creek uh was it nettles creek i think it was nettles yeah. creek mm -hmm. uh we decided to stay in that flat and just let's let let's Let's wait them out. So by yeah. let's say by noon on on Sunday or before the tide shifts, how much how much you got in the live well? Oh, uh, we had I think right we had thirteen pounds. We upgraded twice after the after slat after twelve o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, because that was about when you had to make the decision on Saturday of like go Same or not, time. and then yeah. so you got about thirteen pounds, which is actually probably you already were going to do well with thirteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you make the decision to stay. Then what happens in the afternoon thing? Like, do you guys upgrade to any kickers at that point? Yeah, well, well Sunday was a shortened day. So we had seven hours on Sunday, right. nine hours on Saturday. Mm. So we decided that we got a shortened day. We might as well just stay and, and get it all out 
and try our best. But Sunday, it was guy was what ten minutes left, fifteen minutes left before we left. Probably fifteen yeah. twenty. Called a three pounder, and that bumped us up a pound upgrade. Nice. I think so, we called. We, oh, we called seven eight times. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Nine but times. it wasn't you know a Not pound call. It was a you know yeah, half ounce, still. a couple ounces. But when we left there, you know, riding back, we're like, we got a chance. 14 pounds. Would, what happened Saturday was 14, right. like, and a half won it. Yeah. So we're like, ah, right. oh, well, we'll get top three. We'll, you know, get in the money. But we didn't think the weights would drop. Because, I mean, second place was, what, 12 pounds. Right. So we did, yeah. I mean, all that afternoon was better. I mean, we didn't have that many bites in the afternoon at the 12 o'clock. Was there a key fish that when you caught that, you were like, okay, we, we gotta, we're got we going to be in the top five? Did you ever feel like that during the day? There was a key fish that, that <clears throat> made you guys relax a little bit? I don't know if you ever feel that way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. know if I do. Uh, I'm always looking for that, that one more bite, you know, mm. or that big bite or that big fish. So so even 14, because like, like, so 14 that day, like, so example is like, if you go out on Lake and you catch 24, 25 pounds, I, I'm pretty sure you'd be like, all right, well, if someone beats me, it's going to be a hell of a yeah. day. Did you feel like that day's like, oh shit, we got a chance. Like, was that uh, when you, when you started to drive in, you were thinking that, or was it when you caught that last upgrade, like, okay, now we feel good. You never know about the chick. Yeah, that's because what I was going to say, too. Know. Because yeah. you just don't know. If you didn't put place. the money down on there and you're going to say 12 pounds is going to win or 40, you're like, whatever. You're like, yeah. like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Michael Huff called a nine-pounder on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, if somebody that's comes true. in with a with a kicker like that, yeah. right. it's, it's very possible with the chick. It's, it's yes. very yeah. possible. And yeah, we, it's, and it's we game over. Have, and we didn't have a big fish. No, the fish was three pounds. Right. We just had the quality, quality of fish. fish. It fishes a lot like Florida because the F1s are in there now where yeah. it, when mm. you fish tournaments in Florida, you don't know if somebody caught a nine or not. Exactly. That, that is interesting. I didn't and think I, of that. I will hmm. say about these fish, especially this year, they seem so heavy, mm. strong. The way mm. they look, they yeah. look healthy. Their bellies were fat. Mm-hmm. So that tells me they're eating really, really good. Mm. I think we missed that window of the right. big bite probably yeah. by three weeks maybe. Right. Uh, but the fish were heavy and they and they were very very healthy, so that's that's a plus. They have a lot of tournaments on that place this year. I that is true too. The I mean, Open, yeah, and the FL was oh, it's not the FL, the MLF, MLF circuit thing. Is that the one in BFLs May? Yeah, before we went. <clears throat> yeah, so God, had, that was rough. Yeah, because oh yeah, we had the, it was the bass up in there that when we went the same weekend or was it the weekend after? Because Schmidt, remember he said like he yeah. drove in. Yeah, no, you're right. It's gotten a lot of. Because there were like seven tournaments that weekend yeah. when we went out there. I think there was one on the James, and a lot of people came into the check and fish. I know that. Yeah. And oh, Fishers yeah. of Men went out that same weekend mm-hmm. as us. Yeah. I mean, it was that place was loaded with Because I remember the docks there. There was like a line. Yeah. <laughs> we thought all... going there, we was like, oh, we're going to tear them up. It's yeah. perfect timing. It's always that anticipation. Yeah. yeah. You're going down the, you know, your yeah. day to pre-fish if you get to pre-fish, and you always think, oh, my gosh, they're going to be chewing. And mm-hmm. you're going over to Bates, and you're talking <laughs> about it. You get down there, it's like... Well, shucks, this yeah. is not working out. Yeah. Yeah, not working out any good. It, it really felt like, at least when I was there the first time, if you didn't get them on your first rotation, you were screwed because the boat pressure there, at least when we went the first mm-hmm. time yeah. this spring, it was so insane. Where if you messed up your first rotation, you were always fishing behind somebody if you stayed in the chick. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, that is so crucial when you're thinking about these highly pressured events. Is like, mm-hmm. where are you going to go? Because you're fishing behind people probably the rest mm-hmm. of the day. Yeah. There's still a lot of water though. I mean, I, I just think about how much water is not fished too. Yeah. And if, I mean, everybody's got your honey holes and you got your yeah. places you like to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let I me mean, look at the amount of docks. I mean, there's just there's a lot of water. The creeks you go back up in Dykeson's, A lot of people roll back up in there. Yeah. Oh, we went back there and, and caught some fish too. Did you? Mm-hmm. And so I mean, there's and it's not a it's a narrow creek, but there's still a lot. There's a ton of water. Yeah. Um, but to your point the total number of boats over any given weekend uh, in a given month, let's say, Thousands. I mean, it's, and they are pulling them out. If they're catching three to five fish and they're pulling them out and they're weighing back into the James, I yeah. mean, that definitely is going to, I know they say it works both ways, but you know, you got more of your bigger tournaments ain't going out of, out of the James. So um, over time, I guess it could take its toll. I mean, those fish will replenish. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it, but I know I think our spring numbers were down too. Oh yeah, they, yeah. Um, oh yeah, because it's I think, not. I think this time last year there was twenty some pound bags. <clears throat> last yeah. year, I think. Well, two years ago, Nugent weighed in a nineteen and a half pound bag in yeah. October. Remember I guess that? you're right, Jason. The time, the timing is everything. Yeah, timing, timing yeah. is everything. It's timing. Yeah, I'm actually and you can't really up. determine that. Like we like to think we can determine it by a month or 
weekend, but really your weather is, I think, a more of a driving factor on that yeah. as to when the your temperature drops or whatever, whatever triggers them. But um, hmm. did you fish any pad fields or pads at all? We fished some, and we had much. Had, you had one bite at the very, at the very end before we went in. Yeah, I caught a there in the corner. A big bowfin or something. Well, yeah, I knew you definitely caught a big bowfin. He he just he hooked, set the hook. He said, giant, giant. "Oh, there he is. He's a seven pounder <laughs> getter." <laughs> no hope, bowfin. Yeah, yeah, big old bowfin. Yeah, there cats. Are. We usually we usually hook into a couple cats. Yeah, yeah. We didn't catch no catfish, did we? I think we caught a couple Friday, didn't we? Oh yeah, maybe Friday. Yeah. yeah so let's see. We had six. So day one of the chicken in the spring, it was sixteen pounds, and then it drops off like an anvil. The tenth place was, was ten pounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So safe to say, it fished yeah, that, that's a lot time. better in the spring than it did in the fall. Mm, Not and, much. and we didn't do very good that tournament either. No, I think both days could... we had seven pounds. Yeah, but we had, we caught thirty fish. It just all mm-hmm. the same size. That's day two, fifteen. Like it's so interesting. Like the low end is always around like eight, yeah. eight, ten. Like the highest end was higher in the spring, but it was still. Well, that's you consistently, I guess. I guess the weights were down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the spring to the fall. Yeah, because usually the top ten have about ten pounds. Yeah, there's always a few that'll find them and catch them. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think Henry and then they had an eight pounder that day, didn't they? Yeah, didn't mm-hmm. didn't they? Oh no, big fish was five nine three. But I swore that Henry and them caught a big big bass that weekend. Oh, you did too. Did they post them? Well, I know like Ray and Randy, for example, I mean, they were sitting third going into it um, overall, you know, and of course that's what got them throughout. I mean, they're great, both good mm-hmm. fishermen, but they were catching that, those kickers. Yeah. So I think four of the tournaments, they weighed big fish quality and then fish. quality fish and then had some to add to it. And then, but they come down here and they both have fished well down here and they were ones that one of them had one one day and the other one yeah. had one the other day. And, and that's, and again, back to your talking about number of casts, I mean, that's a lot of, and you think you're at least luck into something. <laughs> you I think mean, one. You, <laughs> you know, uh, I just the way it is, I guess, sometimes fishing. And you um, know when Ray has a big bag because he comes in with a smile on oh, his yeah. face. He's happy. <laughs> he's happy, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's always happy, but he, you know when he has a good, he yeah. has a yeah. good bag. I think Especially overall, the, I mean, the league, the thing, I know, Jace, you were present there a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think it's been good. It's been trending good. I mean, 20 – 23 boats there at the end of the season because a lot of times the end of year it tends to drop off. Uh, but to have 23, I guess, you know, especially with the gas prices the way they've been. And, right. mm-hmm. you, you know, didn't see a big fall <clears throat> off, which that's yeah. that just – our club is strong. Strong. I mean, we got a yeah. lot of numbers. Yep. There's a lot of good people in this yep. club. It's very competitive. Yep. But it's a really good club to be fishing. Great group right. of guys. I mean, yes. I, yes. anybody asks me, I tell them, I say, you won't find a better group of guys uh, because you are competitive. Everybody's competitive. A lot of good sticks, like you yep. say. Oh, yeah. But when it's all said and done, like, you know, everybody's kind of gets along. I don't shaking know if anybody's hands. shaking yeah. hands and congratulating right. each other and, you know, sharing whatever you want to share type thing and just, you know, everybody getting after it. But it's, so we'll be, you know, be interesting to see. I don't think North Mountain will uh, be around next year as far as their clubs. I know some guys have come oh, over really? already for that. Yeah. So, you know, it may continue to grow. I've heard, you know, people talking about wanting to get into the club too that haven't fished before. So, oh, it's going to get bigger. You know, bigger it may before. continue to grow. So, where you would you well. guys, let's do a round table. Where would you like the schedule to go next year? Is there a place that you think would be cool? Anna, 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 Anna. Like Anna. <laughs> I like Anna too. I mean, I, I do. I, my favorite fishing, though, I mean, if you if you want to talk like the Smith, Potomac, the Chick, mm-hmm. Anna, uh, we're missing. That's it, right? Yeah, it's probably the chick. Yeah, um, but I think and I think chick in the spring for sure. But you know, they were asking me. I I, I kind of like would see Smith in Smith or that last one. Yeah, if I think if you did Smith on the last tournament of the year, because now you have the potential of big smallmouth. Um, you know, not that again. You're right. You hit it at the right time. Mm. But I just think that lake Smith Mountain Lake with the colder water temperatures, potential for big you know big smallmouth Lake Muma. See, that's a tough one. And that was 23 pounds, 25 pounds came out of there. Yeah, really? I think, I think that's really yeah. Deep and clear, that'd be tough. I like that place because my grandfather and me fished that when I was little. There you go. So that'd be Where's awesome that? to, to rejoin that place. I, I missed it one time with, with Lonnie. I mean, I, years ago, it'd be cool mm-hmm. to have like a like a place that no one's ever like either that Clear Lake or Deep Creek Lakes or some random one to throw in there. And that's kind of how Smith was though, because we hadn't fished Smith Mountain uh, in years past. 
So when they threw that in, it was kind of, mm-hmm. to your point, it was kind of equal playing field for everybody because – uh, yeah, I think we fished had, it the year before. I mean, that people too, might right? have fished it, you yeah. know, but it wasn't something like you fished it every year. I enjoyed fishing it this year. I, I really did. I enjoyed it. That's the first time I ever caught fish at the Smiths. I've always been there and mm-hmm. always zeroed or caught little ones mm-hmm. here and there, but it was it was fun. The first day was really fun. The second day, it kind of flattened out on us. Yeah, had, we we had four fish the second day, uh, and we just needed one more fish. And I think Justin we lost. Had it. He lost two or three in the last mm. hour. Yeah. Docks and they were jig, there. Jig fishing, you just never know. Mm. They, they hit that there. thing and they'd run straight underneath the dock. Mm-hmm. And no matter how hard your hook set is, you can't get them out. Getting rat. Yep. Yeah, I caught a good one on the top water. Big small It was like 11, 11 o'clock. Uh, it was like three, three, four, three, five. Mm-hmm. It was a good one. Uh, so that kind of took us to four, number number four and, and it mm-hmm. brought us up there. I don't know what the weights were, but I think we had what. Ten pounds. Yeah, we came in fourth with four four mm-hmm. fish. And you got you like Smith too, because you did pretty well. Yeah, I think summer. we had a third and a fourth, maybe. Yeah, or second consistent. and a third or something. Well, I know like Jesse that, but... and Jake. Yeah, were they were like first going and second. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. found a little contour yeah. lines. Oh that, yeah. that one point there around that yeah. island. Someone hmm. had Zara Spook, wasn't he? Was it Zara Spook? Zara And he said that he had never thrown a Spook before. I'm like, what? I love it. And but I love that too. I'm like, you know, it. hey, yeah. pick it up, try it, throw it. You know, <laughs> oh, it works. Yeah. I mean, and they were they were sharking it. Yeah, yeah. they were sharking oh, it. Yeah. So yeah. As a matter of fact, that's where I that's where I caught that that smallmouth close to that yeah, area. Yeah, close right there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That is a cool. And them boys are getting better every year too. Oh they're yeah, they sticks. are. Yeah, they're gonna be sticks. Yeah, they are. And that is, I mean, in, in, in the thing about the club too, you got a wide variety of the younger folk and mm-hmm. the older folk, yep. some old timers, young guys, good mix. And like I said, they're all competitive, and and so uh, it is. I'd encourage anybody out there looking for a league to get into. It's it's a it's a good league. I think it's the best league in this area. Payouts are oh, good. Yeah. I mean, you guys, oh, you're, when you're getting, if you get happen to get big fish and. First or second place, seven, you're eight eight hundred yeah. to thousand bucks mm-hmm. potentially if you got twenty plus boats. Yeah, you know. So. I think we average right around twenty four, twenty five right. for yeah. the year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's good numbers. Yeah. And you don't have to have a big boat either. I mean, no. Jesse and them that's are right. a one seventy five tracker. That's with right. 60, Fifty on the back. That's right. You don't need a big boat. Nope. And I mean, don't. Two years ago, I had a, a eighty nine. Uh, Stratus with the 150 <coughs> on the back of it. Right. And we thought I was going to get left stranded every time I fished yep. it. <laughs> but, but we still fished but it. But you though. made it through. We made it through every time. We and might. don't think you can't compete. I know that's a big thing. A lot of people think, oh, I can't. Like Holiski, he came into it and he's fished some different, uh, Zach, you know, different other leagues, or whatever. He came in, won one of the chicks, you know. So, yeah. I mean, it's like anything. You get in there, it's anybody's game, man. Yeah, you, can, you don't need live scope or no. none of that stuff. No. And just like that, and like I said, then you had the you know they're really good sticks, and have had success in the past. But go out and just you know for whatever reason you just can't put it together. And so I mean it's it's open for anybody. I never mean, know. It's, it's never know. And you can learn so much more. I can't. I, I mean the thing for me too has been with this and the youth. It's taken me places that I probably would have never fished before. You know, yes. and it for me like I work a lot, so it, and it forces me to like this is on the counter. I got I'm going like yeah. I'm not scheduling anything else on top of it. I'm going fishing. I'm going these dates, so you know you're getting at least ten, ten dates for that. And in the, the places you go, I mean, I that's where I first you know ran into the chick, and it's it's been a favorite ever since. You know, and <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have gone down there if it hadn't been with the club. Yeah. So right, and that's so important with any club. You know, I know we have so many people watching about like mixing up your schedule. Mike talked about that for uh, Norm J Kayak about like no one who really wants to go to the same place every single right. time 30 times it's so nice to force somebody to go somewhere new mm-hmm. to try it out like mm-hmm. if the club didn't do that would you have gone to the james like it's, right. a, it's a classic example right. of that and so that's really awesome that they're they're willing to do that what is one goal you guys have for next year win it all <laughs> i mean i mean i'm too competitive think, not to i mean i'm very competitive too. and i the competitive part of it makes makes me tick <laughs> i think it makes him tick too i, I enjoy it I'm competitive nature. I've been that way. My son's that way. My daughter's that way. I've got grandson are that way. So it's just like a makeup, you know? But if we don't win, make those memories. Yes. Yeah. Have fun, right? Teach somebody else something, right? If somebody's mm-hmm. struggling, pick them up. Show them something. That's important, mm-hmm. too. It's the little things we do sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, you got, you know a guy that comes in and he's zeroed, and you, and you know who he is? Maybe give him a hint. Maybe give him mm-hmm. something. That's right. Boom. 
give them something mm, insight. That's right. It's a very like so New Horizon strong, was yeah. someone I was with too, yeah. and they were so good about that with yeah. the younger guys when I started. Uh, this was before we really had like high school stuff, and you'd be there, and they'd after the tournament talk mm -hmm. to each other about what yep. happens. And if you're a new angler, mm -hmm. I, it's so hard because I remember mm -hmm. there's that one kid our the first meeting last year that he just wanted to fish, mm -hmm. and you guys were able to like take him in and stuff, and that's mm -hmm. so important because mm -hmm. if you're not open to get the next generation hooked, mm -hmm. you're right. you're gonna lose them. Exactly. exactly. And you're right, Jason. I, that's good. I, I like that because, and I think. Anybody that doesn't want, I mean, you can hold on to your secrets, whatever. I mean, that's exactly. fine. That's your choice. But at the same time, it's like we've all, very few of us have learned everything on our own. And, and don't get me wrong. There's something to be said about sweat equity and putting the time in on the maps and putting the time in on practice. You know, and I don't expect you to burn your spots or whatever. But at the same time, to your point, like we've all learned something from somebody else. And so, you know, it, what does it take? It doesn't take much to help somebody, right? you know, with a tip that can help them have success and you know, and if you're good enough too, it's one of those things too. If you're good enough, I'll tell you and I can still oh, beat exactly. you, you know, but I'm not saying I would, but if that's, you know, as yeah. a competitor, you know, I'm going to beat you anyway. I can yeah. tell you what I'm using. And we're right not, on. and we're not fishing these hundred thousand dollars. <coughs> that's right. That's, right. that's you know, another good point. We're just fishing local mm. derbies that. That's right. For fun. I mean, that's right. That's what, that's, we're not going to make a lot of money. We're right. probably going to lose money. Yeah. Let's face it. But <coughs> this is a passion, right? That's it's right. It's a passion. Yeah. It's a hobby. Uh, it's something that we enjoy mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it until I Mm -hmm. can't do it anymore yeah. there's something to be said for that too coming from a guy that just fished like the abas and bfls where especially with fuel prices right now like there's no you're not going to win a shit ton of money you're mm -hmm. not and if i'm spending you know 300 i think wait no they bumped it up is it 350 it's probably i think 350 now for a bfl mm -hmm. like yeah. that's just for one day mm -hmm. and that doesn't include gas and everything else like mm -hmm. that's a lot of money now and then you yeah. get what a week to practice too yeah yeah, yeah. so you gotta yeah. get and your percentage and your percentage of really cashing a check are those big tournaments like that? It's mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you got to win it. Was it pretty it's, much it's way you. way down? You have it's to win a, the thing. Like you know. the ABA, like yeah, you could win five grand if you win the thing. They guarantee it, but then no one else wins anything. Exactly. And so you're just gambling, yeah. and it's just right now. Like I don't know. I'm I'm not pursuing this professionally anymore. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so why would you want to spend all your money just to do that when you can mm -hmm. just find a local club? still you know get that competitive itch going yeah but you're not killing your 401k right. <laughs> you know? yeah. and exactly. if you can manage right. to win a term or two a year yeah you might yeah. you might break even yeah you right. might yeah you might unless you go to jake's and you spend all the time on lures <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah. too. <laughs> now is there like i asked everyone this like is there a new technique or something that you really want to learn next year or something you want to get better with i, I really want to learn how to drop shot i do I was thinking the same it, thing. It's that's not something. It's I, I'm, just a, slow I'm a pick down. up a cinco kind of guy and slow down, right? Or now I'll, now I'll throw a Ned rig. Mm -hmm. I'll throw a Ned rig. I've caught a lot of fish on Potomac mm -hmm. on Ned rig, a lot. Uh, drop shotting is something I could definitely improve on. Yeah, be good too. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his power right now. He's a jig fisherman. Yeah, love it. It's hard to beat a jig bite. He, he, he's yeah, a, love definitely it. a jig fisherman. Me, not so much. Uh, if it's a dock or something, I'll. That's where I throw my Cinco in a wacky worm, and you know I'll catch fish that way. Uh, Skipping the jig is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. When you get that first all the way in, it's hard to beat. And then, and then all, go, don't. Oh, he goes, oh, there oh. he is. <laughs> I don't know how many times this year Justin said, "Oh, big one, giant, <laughs> giant." <laughs> Once in there. After a while, I said, "Justin, this is probably three quarters of the season." I said, "Man, don't say anything, because I, mm. I can feel you move." Right, I got peripheral. Yeah. You gotta get I, I can ready. see your rod tip. I can look at your rod tip. <laughs> I know if it's a giant or if it's a two pounder. Stop saying giant because I'm jumping off, grabbing the net, and I look at it, it's like it's a pound and three quarters. <laughs> On the other case, at least I tell you I got a fish. See, I don't say nothing. <laughs> he don't say nothing. I gotta look at it. I don't oh, say nothing. Oh, the fish is right. Oh, let me get the net for you. Well, you got you just gotta say. Hey. Well, you're you're actually you're in the back of the boat looking, right? Or sometimes he's up front with me, but you ought to know. You hear the jig start to sing? If it's starting to sing, get the net. <laughs> when you ever get, like, I know sometimes they're checking drag is like, and I'm like, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, yep. well, he's just checking, you know. Jesse used to do to me all the time. He, uh, I guess his dad did to him when he was little. Uh, so he'd be up in the back, go, um, and I'll get the net. And, uh, yeah, that's fun. Though, your that's ass stuff. Back. So do you guys not fish a lot of smallmouth water around here? Or like, like, because like drop shot and, and, and tubing and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's in everyone's blood. Like, do you, do you guys do a lot of fishing on the Shenandoah? Well, I was well, going to ask you too. If you're not fishing these tournaments, where do you like yeah. to fish around around here? I well, float, when I, I had float. a jet boat, I had a, a jet mm -hmm. boat. And mm -hmm. of course, my John boat had a jet on it too, a smaller one. 
Panhandle. If you can get up and Panhandle around that area and the Guest State Park or below that, I know it's probably a secret. No, it's probably not a secret, but yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it's good smallmouth. It's still mm -hmm. good smallmouth fishing up there. Uh, and that's that's a tube <coughs> tube kind of place. It's yeah. a jackhammer kind of place. It's a jerk bait kind Spin of place. Bait. Spinner bait mm -hmm. kind of place. Yeah. Uh, there's little backup poles. If you can find anywhere where the rapids come down, there's some rocks and there's an eddy. If you can kick, get up in there and cast down, I'm telling you, square bills, jerk baits, jackhammers, tubes. It's definitely different fishing on a on a jet boat than it is a regular yeah. boat. Because I mean, you're going in water that's six inches deep, and I'm just holding on for dear life. Going, <laughs> we hit one of these things, I'm gonna go 100 miles an hour over yeah. you. I missed I missed that boat, uh, but it's it's tough to tournament fish out of a, yeah. out of a jet. So boat. Where, mm -hmm. where do you want to guide, preferably? Uh, probably the. No, South Fork. Uh, South Fork. Riverton, of course, would be a place that we go. Egypt Bend would be a place that we go. Uh, I'd probably go to the Potomac because uh, I think our clientele is going to be down in North Virginia area anyways. Uh, places like that. Uh, maybe over, what's the place in uh, Shenandoah? The Shenandoah, the South Fork in Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably Egypt there too. Bend? Yeah, it's a South Fork. Well, there's Egypt Bend, but there's also uh, Shenandoah. The Above town, that about town 10, of Shenandoah. 10 right. miles. Yeah. Above Egypt Bend. So kind of locally, but I would go to Potomac as well. Okay. So that gives everyone you know, a variety of places if you want to actually go out with him as a guide. That There you go. And then more information about that when it becomes available. So then are you going to be using this boat or Looney's boat for guiding, or how is that going to be working? Because you guys, you said you're guiding together, right? Yes. Okay. Well, he's got a boat. He's got an express boat, and I've got a Ranger. And, gotcha. Uh, we'll just kind of flip-flop back and forth. Uh so both of our boats. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. And he shares problem. kind of the same thing. I know that's again what the thing he's been talking about is I didn't realize he he big fly fisherman too. Yeah. But he's all about teaching. He's all about teaching and sharing mm -hmm. knowledge and helping people. He he breaks and, it down uh, in little details. Uh yeah. Lonnie's really good at that. Uh so in that aspect of it, the fly fishing part, that'll be his parte, definitely. Uh I'll be more of a let's put people on fish, let's catch right. fish, let me show you how to tie a knot. This is what I would use in this situation, this time of year, this color. So I would be more doing stuff like that. See, that's something I that's want to do next huge. year. And it's, yeah, yeah. no, it. that's, I mean, that's, and that's kind of goes in line with what we talk about here all the time is, you know, there is, there's so many kids out there that, you know, don't have that mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of people anymore too, aren't like, I think we were where we just went out and did it. We fished a yeah. Creek, we fished a puddle. It didn't matter. Yeah. You know, or you waited. I mean, you just, um, and once you got your driver's license, you were, you were, you'd find trout streams, you'd be on the yeah, Shenandoah, yeah. like it didn't matter. You were, you were in a canoe, yeah. you just fished, you know, and you didn't need anybody to take you fishing. Right. But, um, <clears throat> but anyway, but no, I think that's, there's definitely a need for that. Absolutely. I agree with um, that. So do you have a goal for next year? So like for me, like this past year was all about understanding like the BFS stuff. So mm -hmm. I spent 90% of my time with a BFS setup in my hand. Mm -hmm. Next year, I want to figure out fly fishing a little bit more because mm -hmm. I've literally never done it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so I've always wanted to catch a carp on a fly. So that's something I want to try to do next year. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. So be a fun fight like, there. like, yeah, it's like, like, uh, Travis is talking about that. Like when you, when you catch one of that and it's gone, like that right. thing will pull like mm -hmm. crazy. Now that BFS setup, is that, is that like, did, did that replace your whole entire spinning rod lineup? I, I thought it would at the beginning and now I've figured out that there's a niche for it. So if you're going to be throwing tiny crankbaits and Ned rigs in certain situations, um, like with a crankbait, before I take little spinners and jerk baits and I throw on, on spinning tackle. But now with the BFS setup, I have the control to stop it. So now when I'm around docks and underhand trees, I can still fish on four or five pound test, but I can have a bait caster setup where I can stop it immediately. Oh, so nice. I feel very precise with yeah. it. And then Ned rig wise, I I had this huge I, I figured out the perfect Ned rig setup. That's an extra light, it's a very, very sensitive rod. And so now I can fish these seams and what I'll do is I match the head to where as I pick it up, it can still drift and I want just that amount. So I'll fish a half ounce to a three eighths ounce ball head jig with the Ned rig. So that way, if it drops straight to the bottom, I know it. And if it doesn't immediately, I just set and I can set because I don't care because I'm not gonna get it snagged. Exactly. I can right. still pop that stuff. And so when I did this hook set, I, I, I half ass it a lot because the hooks are so sticky sharp. I don't really have to set very hard and then I'll just double set a lot of times. So it comes right up here. He's there. Boom. I got him. And then we caught, 
Yeah. Yeah. And my, I, the, spinning rods are my nemesis, man. They they hate me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I always I always have a uh, Boo Garcia in my hand mm-hmm. most of the time. I mean, unless it's well, that sounds like that would that would work for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's how me too. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, like, I can't stand a spinning rod. I can't do it. This is right here. This is right here. So these fish, this was like, it was 20 degrees when we went out. And so it's the same thing. So this is our roll cast <coughs> into the slack pool with this setup. And so basically I feel anything. I just do it a quick little pop. And so what happens there, I thought I was popping it free, but I have one. And then all I have to do is just hit him one more time to make sure I got it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that second hit, you're just actually just planting the hook just a little deeper. I'm just, just double tapping. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then I can do that. And what's so, that's what I like about it. So now all I have to do is I can just pretend that I'm popping it off of anything. And if I feel it, I can just give it one more hit and the hook's in. And that way I'm not embedding it in a log. But every time I feel something, I can still just almost like I'm pulling a jig he's, through. He's popping it off the grass. Yep. Yeah. Same thing. You already got it. But I couldn't do that with a spinning reel setup, like yeah. you said. Yeah, so because I, you're I, getting too much. Yeah. yeah. Because too much flux. In there. Too much. In way there, too yeah. much flux. Yeah. So start with this. And then if the bite's super sensitive, you can go down. But again, I don't lose big smallmouth with this. And so 12-pound fluorocarbon, you know, look for a medium bait casting rod. And then just play around with your ball headed jig with a super sticky hook yeah. is what you want. And it's a weed guard. It's a it's a jig. It's just the molded jig head. I gotta see if Cashin makes a BFS setup. I can send you a link to a bunch of yeah. things too afterwards. But that yeah. and I also have an I have a, a medium light one too that I use with like Panther Martins, mm. little crankbaits, mm. little jerk baits. Could you throw like a um like a Nika rig on it? Yeah, yeah. You can really? definitely throw that too. Yeah. Like and it like again, like so then if I want to skip it, I mean, I probably just use a spinning gear setup so I can yeah. just throw that thing back there. Mm-hmm. But again, like you just have more control. Like I can just throw them in the boat, yeah. which is what I like about that. Um, and then I didn't in this one, but um, I think the rest of them, I think we call them blades. But um, yeah, like I have another video. I got to find it where, yeah, I'm just taking and I can just take these little jerk baits and I can just underhand cast them into the trees and I can just stop it with my thumb. And that's what's so nice is now I can fish trout jerk baits, those super small ones yeah, when yeah. I need to match the hatch. Yeah. But I can still have a bait caster and I can just go down. Yeah. And so it, it I might gotta invest. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's fun. It you actually is a thing. Yeah, yep. right? We well, can hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Figure as much. But yeah, yeah. So what were we talking about before we started? <laughs> that's, that's, cool. Cool. I, that's, that's, cool. that's my that's fault there. Good. No, no, you're good. <laughs> But that's what's fun about like just committing to a new technique every year, and that's mm. what I'm trying to do because it's just fun to like learn something. Yeah, it I makes you more versatile. And, before then, yeah, it brought yeah, I mean, it broadens your makes you more versatile, and mm-hmm. that's one thing to say about Ray too. With you know, just when and, and that's the thing too when you meet people, talk to people, just like you're talking about mm-hmm. earlier, you can learn something from everybody, right? And, oh, and yeah. it may not stick. You may not like it. You try it, you don't like it. Yeah, but you know, you may like it. You mm-hmm. never know. So. And that's Absolutely. the bottom line too. We want to have success. We want to catch fish. Yeah, right. That's the so, that's the goal. That's, that's, I mean, that's the goal. That's, yeah. Yeah. Game of the game. Yeah. yeah. Now you all fish Carolina rigs a lot. You know I haven't. Brian messed around with it. He listened to a lot of podcasts about it. Uh, I know Jeremy Radford. You know he had a lot of yeah. success with that, and it's it's a great technique. I personally don't fish it much. Brian didn't stick with it a whole lot, but um, it is. It's, yeah. It's a. It's a good I've technique. I want to try that too, but never have because I've seen like Scott Martin throws it a mm-hmm. lot and all of them, but cause they they go through twenty techniques a day. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah <coughs> absolutely. Them, them mm-hmm. big name guys, and it's just hard to keep up with. And, well, and that's the, your point. I think the thing for me is sometimes too there is there's almost too much information out mm-hmm. there too, and you get I think sometimes too you can get too much. And where I'm at now is just trying to simplify it, bring it back the center to where I do like a jig too yep. and I'm just going to have maybe three things that I'm going to throw and throw consistently and and just try to stick to that yeah. I mean make subtle think, changes but, but that not can, see that that hurts me too though because I throw I mean I can I throw a crankbait I yep. throw a chatterbait a jig and a nico rig yep. if I don't catch something on them I gotta figure out the fifth sixth seventh eighth right mm-hmm. and, well, and in your mind what, you're like me, that mind never stops. Yeah. And it's like you're but, constantly thinking about the next thing instead of, but the thing was too, it's like, or do you not, the, the stuff that you don't have confidence in, might, might have caught it too, you just didn't stick with it long enough. Mm-hmm. You put it down. I, I feel like it's also the 10,000 hour rule. Like, again, like <coughs> I sucked with the Ned rig until I told myself this past year, I'm going to fish BFS, I'm going to figure mm-hmm. this out. 
to answer your question about the Carolina rig, it's something where I feel like if you got to pick one technique and it's on your boat that whole year, right, because then you right. understand how to apply it the right. next year. Yeah. And right. then you have this thing mastered because if you just dabble lightly, you're going to mess it up. Right. When you commit to it and it's always there in your mind, you find the subtle nuances of when it works and how to make mm. it work. Like, but, but Jared had a good point. Yeah. I think a lot of times, I mean, at least for me and maybe other people too, Maybe we take on too much. Ooh, yeah, yeah. We take on too much, and we're trying to fish 13, 14, 15 different ways. Mm -hmm. I think we stick to what we know, right? And grow from there. Right. Those five or six things, let's get really good at those five or six things and be consistent with those. Because I guarantee you, one of those six things, fish are going to hit. Mm -hmm. If you find a fish, that's going to work, mm -hmm. and then expand from there. But don't try to go start out fishing 15 different yeah. applications because that's going to be too much. You're not going to be... You're not going to be proficient at it. Mm -hmm. Just learn to grow off your knowledge, yeah, right? Your fundamentals, and learn to grow from yeah. that. It's just, Don't start it, too big. And it's hard to to learn a technique when the only thing you do is fish tournaments. Like yeah, I don't, I don't have too. enough fun days where I can go up there and just learn the <coughs> technique. Um, that's good, we we all wish we had. Well, but I <clears throat> that's another thing too that I hear Jeff Little talk about how much he learned from just watching other anglers. Mm -hmm. Like if he's going out teaching somebody mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a rod in his hand. And boy, you can, and like with this, with helping with the youth and I'm, I don't have a rod in my hand, but I'm watching them and watching what we're working and we're in the, what, what I would think would be the right places to catch fish and it's not working, but I'm looking to graph. And then in my mind, because I'm not casting, I'm thinking, well, we, so in other words, too, being able to learn to read instead of worry so much about this, what I'm throwing and more of what, what are the conditions? Yeah. What are the conditions showing me? based on the weather, the wind, whatever, 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 and then, and they're not up shallow, let's pull off yeah. and fish that 12 to 20 yeah. foot water or whatever that is because they're not, and maybe they are there, but they're not eating. But anyway, just looking at more of the conditions and trying to fish more to the condition and less about what specifically do I have tied on and what color and what size and all that other stuff is my big thing right now too, yeah. is trying to, get better at that fish to the conditions but it's almost like yep. i like what you said though about balancing it out because like you can almost od on tournaments and then you get locked in your ways yes. versus actually yes. going out and just fishing and practicing yeah. things in your craft yes and that's my problem and yeah. slowing the mind I down i mean it's yeah. almost too you gotta slow <laughs> i guess what i learned from just sitting too is you slow it down yeah because you're right because you're constantly because you're trying to that next fish yeah and you're working so fast and your mind's going so fast instead of just stopping slowing down like you were saying earlier too just take a break and start looking at what's it telling me right here you know right. and pay attention to those little subtle clues yes you know, if you yes. go if you go an hour you know and you weren't catching them or you were either way and then you come up on this rock rock ledge or you come up in this wood pile or or cypress trees or whatever or grass and you get a bite mm -hmm. where was that fish at how deep that how that's deep right, it yeah. was that's right and then what it hit on that's and right. then if that happens again mm -hmm. all right start putting the pieces of the puzzle right. together yeah you know, and that that's a clue, man. And start following that. And a lot of a lot of times we get away from that, and we pick up something else. Yep. Uh, throw that throw that that lure. Your, your confidence bait. Everybody's got them. Yep. We all have got yeah. confidence baits that we like to throw, and it's mm -hmm. probably three or four different things. Mm -hmm. Pick it up and then try it somewhere. You know, the same wood pile, but mm -hmm. hundred yards down down the river, down right. the lake. Right. If it works again. You've got a pattern, and that pattern might last for an hour or two. Right. And yeah. that's what yeah. you got. Yeah. You might be able to run it all day. And right, the, and that, the color is yeah. a big thing too. Just changing the color, of, you can throw the same thing, mm -hmm. just change the color of it. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean that changes a lot of times. Downsizing too, yeah. downsizing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but we're all saying the same thing, which is change. Because the one thing I've learned more is, and I think maybe a live scope has helped with this, is you realize there's more fish in an area than you thought. And I remember maybe it's narcissism where you think, well, clearly if they're not hitting the spirit bait, there's no fish here. And it's like, I've learned a little bit more like clearly this ain't working switch, like switch the bait before you switch the area mindset. And like, cause if they're going to eat it, they're, they're going to eat it. Like rarely is a fish, you know, it's going to be on the hundredth cast. He's going to hit it. Yeah. And it's having that confidence in your head to not let this and just picking on because it's right in front of me, that being a crutch. All right. All right. You know, I fish yeah. this pocket, but I know that there, there's fish here. Let's try, try something. Different applications. Yes. Yeah. Different try, applications. Try a Cinco. Try a yes. shot. Try a Ned yeah. Brig. You know, pick something else up. Because if you feel, I mean, I go with intuition, gut, past mm -hmm. experience. I mean, we all do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, that's experience. That's how we gain our knowledge, right? From what we did in the past and we learned from it and we grew, we developed. Try something else, man. It, 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 you may trigger something like, oh, wait, I have a new favorite 
confident yeah. bait. Mm-hmm. And it could be something that I don't even, I didn't think yeah. I would like. But it, it, it could be, it could be that leech, that helgamite mm-hmm. that Scott was talking about. Mm-hmm. You don't, you just don't know. You don't yeah. know. But be told, what's so amazing too, what I love too, is when you can go back, you know people are shooting you straight and you talk about what they caught. And you look, and you look, and it, 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 there's 15 or 20 different things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, too? Mm-hmm. It's like, what worked? Now, not everybody's at the top. What what, what won it, you know, in this case? But, yeah. you know, there's more than one thing that's going to catch a fish. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. They're always biting. They're right. always yes. biting somewhere. You that know? is true. And But that that will go in your mind. It's like, oh, well, I, we've been here for three hours. We haven't caught a bite. Like, do we move? Do we change colors? What do we do? Like, it's always yeah. something. But to your, your point, too, is it's also becoming good at, uh, again, the different, uh, they weren't on the cypress, they weren't on the wood, yeah. you know, you went to a flat. So being able to fish the flat versus, or the dock, mm-hmm. or, or the, the dock. you know, so that's the other thing too. That for I gets me excited. I want to go out again today. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Getting good at different, different technique, different areas, different styles of yeah. fishing. But yeah. yeah, there's something to be said to that though. I keep coming back to that. It's like, you got to spend time with a bait long enough to just get to that next level mm-hmm. of understanding yeah so you know at la- like example is i got big into the swim bait thing because i i caught i think it's like almost he was almost 10 out of sleeters lake and everyone knows where that is it's sleeters lake in percival but that's because i spent time understanding those baits and then i mm-hmm. put the work in so when he talked about cold weather swim baits mm-hmm. that's an old west coast thing that the softer the plastic when that water gets super cold it'll still have movement when you hit something mm-hmm. not freezing up but yeah mm-hmm. but that's something where if you've never fished a swim bait before you're just going to grab whatever but yeah. that's when he held it upside down we did that all the time and we would put them in we'd boil them in, in a pot to get it softer before you go out there because you want it to where you're barely cranking that reel and every time it hits a rock the whole thing will just mm. shake because those those bigger fish in the winter they're sharking that bait the whole time as soon as it hits something it does that little quiver that's when they hit it that's the trigger and but that's something again yeah. you you put the time into it and i think with a lot of younger anglers too they bring them back to the carolina rig pick one or two baits yeah. and know them and once you know them then you can go yeah. try to learn something new because this will become instinctual at that point you're never going to forget right. that yeah. no, that's right Cause, so cause a lot of almost go, like muscle memory yeah, yeah. yeah. muscle yeah. memory muscle memory yeah and a lot of them go on youtube and like oh well look at this new bait look at this new technique right. go try this out and right. then I've, I've found out me doing it is like no tournament i like, oh, well, I haven't tried this yet. Let me try this see how it works. Right. Like, it's not the right time. Kind of not the right time. Yeah. <laughs> Technique would be the middle of the tournament. Unless it and works. I've done it. Unless it works. Yeah. Right? Oh, unless and then it you're works. Genius. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, my and then gosh. You that was a great, 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 great food, <laughs> man. God, I'm, that's why you're my partner. <laughs> uh, good stuff, guys. Uh, Jared, you got anything else for tonight? Or? I don't think so. You guys got anything bad? Mm. Oh, yes. our sponsor. So we did have a sponsor this cool. year. Um, uh, my parents own Stonehouse Floors. Oh, awesome. They're in Strasburg. Oh, good. Um, the Florin Company. All been right. open for 54 years. They were wow. in Front Royal. Now they're in Strasburg going on top of Fisher's Hill. Um, let's give them a shout out. My mom, Kim. Um, if you need any flooring needs, yeah. call that. It's 465-8055. Ask for Kim or Ben. And we can hook you up with some new floor. I love it. And we'll do one better. A link to their business will be in the episode description. So you can just click on the link and go right to that with their number as well. Yeah, support local. I can vouch for them. Did my floors. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. That's excellent. Best in the county. No, and that's so important too, especially in today's, you know, time of supporting local whenever you can. Because, you know, that local family-owned business, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where it's at. And uh, if if you can do that... <clears throat> do that because mm-hmm. that's that's helping yeah. local that's helping people in our community and uh so that's good that's good stuff so we're well, looking forward to seeing you guys out there again next year it's it's it goes quick i mean here we are november right now mm-hmm. the year's we're almost in like 23 february we'll be meeting again for the new season and yeah. it'll uh, two months off and get back after it right we'll going right back yeah. at it so right at it. Uh, it's deer season now though Knock down some more deer. Now. That's right. <laughs> but now, but now I'm ready. I'm ready to get back fishing now. That's right. Talking about Doesn't it. take long. Nope. Just let it warm up a little bit. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'll be I'll be game for Lake Anna striper fishing trip. <clears throat> yeah. Let's well, and that's the thing too. Fishes. I mean, fishing is year round. That's a year. Oh, this round. is my time of yep. season. I'm yeah. gonna be out there until See, the ice I've, I've never over. fished that cold weather before like that. All right. it takes is one time of that tug, and it's a ten pounder, or it's a yeah, four or five yeah, pounder. Yeah, like, yeah. like an opportunity for the biggest fish. Yeah, a lot of times I talk about this all the time, but 
the biggest fish, and especially out of the river right now, will come in the oh, next yeah. two to three months. I mean, what was it? Neil? Neil's Neil, I mean, that's, what was that, yeah, that was I mean, a monster. That was a pig. Mailbox. Yep. <laughs> I mean, so. it, it sucks. It's cold, but that's what's so alluring is like in the springtime, you might catch a, you could catch a big one, but you're going to catch a lot of dinks, especially mm-hmm. like May on. Right. Now, it, like when I went out with, with Jeff, we only caught one that was under like two pounds. Mm-hmm. Like everything, we didn't catch yeah. a lot, but every time like mm-hmm. you, you lean back, you know, it could it, be a football. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. fun to think. That, especially where we live at, man. I mean, oh, yeah. the river is right behind my house. I mean, I can go anytime I want. There you go. It's yeah. just it's deer season. I get I get the horns <laughs> in my mind. And it's like I think the coldest fishing trip I've ever been on was probably three or four years ago. Lonnie and I went to the Susquehanna mm. in my jet boat. <laughs> brutal. That was so brutal. Brutal. We it's caught too we caught cold. some we caught some quality fish, but not many. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just yeah, sitting it, in the tree stand twenty brutal. degrees or going fifty miles an hour in the boat twenty degrees is real different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Mike Funkhauser too and his wife. They were first on day one. Yes, mm-hmm. there were two mm-hmm. single day tournaments. So, yep. uh, congratulations to you guys, and we appreciate you coming mm-hmm. on. And Thanks, uh, yep. it's always fun, like I say, to sit around and talk fishing and just learn different things. And appreciate your your honesty and and Jason. That's pretty cool with you know sharing information. And uh, yeah, when when's this guide service going to kick off? You think uh, March? <clears throat> okay, Somewhere spring, mid- spring mid-March. of the year. Uh, we just got to narrow down the name. We've got four or five names. Okay. So let's have you. Um, we got let's, some paperwork we still need to do. But. I'm going to make a note to myself when I edit this. <coughs> let's have them both on when the guide, like just before their guide service gets going. We can have you, you and two Lonnie. on. You yeah. And, and on. we can like plug it too. Perfect. Officially. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you edit that, Tom. Um, and then we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.